Hello everybody, it is Alan Night, it is Brony Time, and welcome back to Dual Destinies. And, uh, yeah, we're about to, uh, get Cosmos' new testimony about the person he is claimed to have seen. It'll be interesting to see where this goes, but here we go. As I tried to enter the lounge, the true killer inside fired a gun at me. I hid to avoid getting shot. But when I tried to get another look, they had vanished into thin air. I was near the elevator side door and, well, the launch pad one door. <laughs> Excuse me. And the control room should have been shut tight to the killer. So you were shot up by the killer as well, and then they disappeared? Yes, though luckily no harm came to my glorious body. Fortunately, the bullet hit Terran's oxygen tank. I know, because I heard a pang. That must have been the sound of the tank being ruptured. Wait, but I thought the bullet hit his metal. That was Detective Arm's bullet, remember? R right, uh, what a mess this is turning into. So let's see. Director Cosmos is claiming that when he found Mr. Terran and his killer, the culprit shot a 10 caliber bullet at him. Right, but it actually hit Mr. Tehran's oxygen tank and ruptured it. Then the killer disappeared, and the director went into the boarding lounge. When Detective Arm caught up and fired those warning shots at him, judging by his medal, it looks like one of them almost took him out too. Good summary, but that doesn't explain where our mystery killer went. Director Cosmos, I was wondering if you could elaborate on when the figure disappeared. I'm ashamed to admit I tried to hide myself when I was shot at, but when I peeked back into the lounge, the real killer was gone. I rushed into the lounge straight away to investigate. But what I found was to run with a knife in his chest and Starbuck out cold on the floor. Hmm, so we have a culprit who vanished from the scene that had no escape route. Vanished without a trace. It's truly like one of the great mysteries of the cosmos. Hmph, a riddle of the ages indeed. But I'd rather know how a fibbing leech such as you can be lauded as great. A great man is always misunderstood in his own time. But he must remain true to himself, even if those around him don't understand. Well, that might be the first true statement he said all day. But how do you suppose this person managed to vanish so suddenly? Simple, because it was Space Boy himself. When he was spotted by the director Nora, he quickly feigned unconsciousness. That would certainly take all the mystery out of the idea of a vanishing culprit. I want to raise an objection, but I don't have any counter evidence. Director Cosmos, when you saw this person, did you also see Mr. Starbuck on the floor? No, because it was dark as a black hole in there. I didn't see Starbuck until the other person vanished and I entered the room. Hmm. That was exactly helpful. Hmm. I'm prepared to accept your surrender, right, Dono? can't find any holes in this test, Winnie. But I can't give up. Mr. Wright, why don't you let me help, huh? While the director was giving his testimony, I detected a cacophony of discord. Which means he's hiding his true feelings from us, huh? That just might help us find out what happened to our vanished killer. That'd be great, Athena. Let's see what you can do with him. You got it, boss. I wouldn't want to miss this chance to delve into the great mind. You're a cosmos. Prepare to hand over the secrets of your heart to me. And nothing weird there. Wait. Got it. 
Why, well, you must have thought it was very strange the killer vanished into thin air. I did. That kind of thing just doesn't happen usually. And yet, at the time, you barely registered any shock at the occurrence? What? Why are you... Uh... I can only think of one reason as to why you weren't surprised by the killer's vanishing act. You must have had a good idea of where they went. Is that right? What? No, of course not! That's preposterous! Only I can enter the control room. And the area beyond the launch pad door was filled with smoke, making it impassable. As for the southern door... I was standing right there. So there was nowhere for the killer to run to. Maybe. Or maybe not. You went into the room to check on Mr. Starbuck and Mr. Prede Mr. Turan, yes? What if the culprit took that opportunity to silently slip out through the southern door? I highly doubt it, as you'll recall right after I entered the lounge. Detective Vaughn came rushing towards it herself via the southern hallway. Anyone trying to escape through there would have been caught by her. Yet the director wasn't surprised the killer vanished. So you're absolutely sure there was no escape route for the culprit to use? <laughs> it's working, boss. One more punch and it'll be a knockout. There seems to be one more emotion that's at odds with his testimony. Go get him. Okay, back to the Matrix it is. Time to pinpoint our way to victory. Why were you sad here? I did notice that earlier, and I was curious about that one, too. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you seem to be afraid of the, afraid of the launch pad door. The Great Yuri Cosmos afraid? And what basis do you have for that outlandish accusation? Whether I have any basis or not, you seem quite distressed by it. I am most certainly not. Director Cosmos. There's something about that launch pad door you're not telling us, isn't there? Uh, wow, he's speechless. It looks like you hit the nail on the head, boss. Uh, just input those two pieces of data and? Yes, just what I wanted to see. Presto changeo, less discord. Looks like we're on the right track. Thanks, Athena. How to make sense of what we've learned. Director Cosmos wasn't surprised that the culprit suddenly vanished from the lounge. She points to the possibility that he knew where the killer had escaped to. Furthermore, talking about the door to the launch pad made him uneasy. In other words, he's probably hiding something about the launch pad one door. When you put these two pieces together, only one solution to this puzzle comes to mind. Director Cosmos, did the real killer escape through here? The culprit went through the launch pad one door to escape, didn't they? Yes. I mean, no! Disaster to starboard! We're going to crash into an asteroid! A master tactician, you are not. The area beyond that door was filled with smoke, wasn't it? True, but this is still the only logical answer there is. We could just figure out what. Oh, sorry. If we could just figure out what the director is hiding about the launch pad one door, we should be able to iron out the logical inconsistencies. And, but the door requires fingerprint recognition. Only Starbuck, Turan, and I have access. I don't see how the killer could have opened the security lock. Do you? That's an easy one. The killer was right there in the boarding lounge, meaning. There's a way he could have easily gotten past that security lock. But wait, didn't we only find Solomon's fingerprints? Which means it had to have been him. I'm going to think of it. We did examine the prints of the fingerprint recognition device. I propose that the killer used this person's fingerprints to get past the security lock. Uh, I guess you could also go that route. Take that! Uh, that! Mr. Starbuck was lying unconscious there in the boarding lounge. Anybody could have easily gotten past the security lock by using Mr. Starbuck's prints. And actually, Mr. Starbuck's prints are exactly what we found on the device's screen. Looks like he does have something to hide about the launch pad one door. 
And I'm betting it's got something to do with the culprit's escape route. I don't have enough information to see the whole picture yet. You know, something just occurred to me. Would you like to hear it? Huh? Oh yes, by all means. There's a security camera in boarding lounge one. Right, the one that recorded the victim of the defendant. What about it, Your Honor? If the true culprit escaped into the launch pad one corridor, then that might be recorded from the security footage as well. Then the mystery would be solved. What do you think of my logic? Uh, it kind of cut out. I hope you didn't strain your faculties too much for that, Chabaldness. I beg your pardon? Look, if we play the security footage beyond this point... Oh my, the footage cuts off! The camera was running on backup power, but apparently the power cables were damaged. Most likely by the after effects of the explosion. There's no footage after this, be it of criminals or space aliens. And I thought it was such a good idea, too. Hmm. Just because a grandchild is watching from the gallery, doesn't mean you should try to show off too much, Grandpa Baldness. Prosecutor Blackwell, how did you know about my grandchild? His grandchild just learned a little about the harshness of the adult world. Setting aside this issue of grandchildren, I'd like to have the witness continue. Director Cosmos, could you tell us more about when you entered the lounge? <laughs> if I must. Why were you surprised by that? Director Cosmos, why were you so surprised when Detective Farm found you and again when she fired? Isn't that a bit unnatural? Sadly, even a great man such as myself of ordinary human feelings. Our bodies are bound by the forces of gravity and emotions. Even a great man such as myself experiences surprise on occasion. Um, yes, I'm sure you do. But my real point is not the fact that you were surprised, but rather what you were surprised by. Pardon me? First, you were surprised when Detective Arm found you in the lounge. And just after that, you were of course again surprised when she shot at you. But considering what you were surprised about, a strange phenomenon occurs here. Director Cosmos, what is strange about your surprise reaction is the fact that you were more surprised when Arm came. Sure, you were surprised when Detective Arm shot at you. The surprise you felt when she found you in the lounge was much greater. The fact that you were more surprised by simply being found than being shot at suggests to me that you were conflicted about whether it was you it was you, were, whatever it was you were doing there. The enemy has acquired a new weapon. Commence operation, hide onto your desk. Please tell me I finally sunk his battleship. Boss, I'm getting this discord now. That must mean he really is hiding something about that launch pad door. Whatever he's hiding most likely has something to do with the killer's escape. I wonder what it could be. He was doing something suspicious around that door. Maybe we could spot some change between before he came to the room and after. Detective Fulbright gave us a photo taken after the crime. Let's run a comparison. Let's see, this is the footage of the door before Director Cosmos arrived. And this is how the door looked after the director entered the lounge. Hey, look at that! There is a change. Something's definitely different. Director Cosmos, what is it? What have you two been up to over there? Finding the answer to what you were doing when Detective Arm found you, that's what. The answer lies clearly in this footage. All you have to do is compare it to the photo that was taken during the investigation. 
Don't be ridiculous. Really do have an answer. You'd have pinpointed it out already. He's asking for it. This is what changed directly after the incident. The direction of the knob changed. Take that! The answer is the knob. Your Honor, please take a look at this footage. Hmm, let's see. Take a look to the knob next to the launch pad door. As you see, it's horizontal. Yes, it is, isn't it? However, when we investigated the scene of the crime yesterday, the knob was vertical. Hmm, and what does that mean? It means that sometime between before the director arrived and after, someone turned the knob. Ah! After the scene was discovered, you were the only one who would have turned the knob. Come on now, Director Cosmos, let's hear what you have to say. And you're, what were you trying to do by turning that knob by the door? Ah, fine, I admit it, you're right. I did turn that knob. That knob is a safety lock meant to keep the launch pad in place. I was afraid there would be more explosions. So I want to move the launch pad away. You wanted to do what? Hey, didn't Ponko tell us something about how to prepare for launch? She said that once the launch pad's fully assembled, it's moved to the launch site. The safety lock in the boarding lounge has to be disengaged first. Guess that clears up the knob it's for. Oh, so the killer escaped in the launch pad one corridor. Maybe they were transported along with the launch pad to the launch site. I don't think so. The launch pad one corridor was filled with smoke. Not that they could have escaped through that corridor. So then where did the killer escape to? Hmm. Guess there are still some things we have to uncover. Director Cosmos, I request that you tell us about moving the launch pad in more detail. Fine, but listen carefully, for I'm about to give history-making testimony. Why are you happy here? I had no choice but to disengage the safety lock. Make it sound like you were reluctant to do so, and yet when you did it, you felt some joy, as if you were very pleased with yourself. How do you do it? How do you know everything as if you were there? Pretty impressive, isn't it? This is the power of analytical psychology. So, care to explain why you felt joy when you disengaged the safety lock? When I think back on the facts we've discovered up to this point, I have to believe that you were trying to fulfill some hidden agenda. How do you know about that, too? Because I'm more or less a pro. At guessing. But you have no proof that I had a hidden agenda. Even if I did, I would never ever tell you. So there. I know they say people regress as they grow, grew older, but you, sir, take the cake. And how could you doubt a man with such great intensity, intelligence, Silence. and integrity? You, a man of integrity, don't make me laugh. Prosecutor Blackwell? What came over him all of a sudden? You spotted nothing but falsity since you stepped up to the sand. You're not the kind of man that will be glorified in the annals of history. Not for greatness, anyway. Unless you consider great this barefaced liar an honor. L liar! Oh. His words bite harder than his blade. You moved Launchpad 1 after the explosions? My, how naive you are. You fail to realize how even the facts themselves have betrayed you. You know, just a thought, but modern English can be your friend. And here's a thought for you. Immediately following the bombing, Launchpad 1 was on the boarding watch one side. The police confirm this on scene. What? A liar! So that means the director didn't move the launch pad. 
Curse my judgment for calling history's greatest liar to the witness stand. Let us leave him to indulge in his lies and war games to his heart's content. A liar? But it doesn't make sense. You can't deny that someone turned that knob. Once the safety lock was released, I'm sure the pad must have went somewhere. If we chase down the truth of this issue, we just might find where the killer escaped to. Your shirt must have went somewhere. We just might find out. Your arguments are nothing but conjecture, buffling, bluffing, and wishful thinking. Stop chasing your fantasies and see reality for what it really is. Are you not man enough to, boy? <laughs> Talk about hitting below the belt. Young it's these days. I don't understand it. I'm sure Director Cosmos must have moved the launch pad. The knob was definitely turned after he came to the lounge. The launch pad is right where it's supposed to be. Ah! Wait a minute. Maybe I have it all backwards. What if the director turned the knob not to move the launch pad away, but to bring it back to where it was supposed to be? What are you blathering about? What if the launch pad was at the launch site before the incident? And then after the incident... Director Cosmos moved it back to its usual spot. All he had to do was turn the knob to call the launch pad back, and it would be right where the police found it. Oh, dang. <sighs> she made him sigh like Mr. Starbuck. Is that I said really that off base? It pains me to have to explain how wrong your own logic is to you. However... Our great liar turned the knob only after he discovered the crime scene. Indeed, the pad existed beyond the lounge when our astral wonders made their escape. A fact that has been recorded. Been recorded for posterity on filmless film. Oh, right. So to reiterate... Stop chasing your fantasies and see for Ali what it really is, boy. Get a grip, Mr. Wright, and focus. We know the launch pad must have been moved. But our deductions and the actual facts of the case are in direct contradiction to each other. Well, maybe the two astronauts never actually boarded the rocket. This footage could be fake, taken with body doubles after the incident or something. On second thought, that's too far-fetched even for me. Never actually boarded the rocket. Hey, wait a minute. Maybe. Just maybe. Huh? Huh? Prosecutor Blackwell, what if I told you that the two astronauts never set foot inside the launch pad area, but instead went into another place? And what if when the director moved launch pad one back, it was not from the launch site, but from another place? What would you say then? Cut the existential bull or I'll cut you. Mr. Wright, you will explain yourself at once. I know I'm right was all the other way around from the beginning. Very well, Your Honor. Let me explain. Director Cosmos' reason for moving Launch Pad 1 was... to switch it with another place. Because he wanted to switch it with some other place. I'm sorry, but did you say switch it? But what could he possibly have switched the Launch Pad with? Oh, you'd be surprised, Your Honor. All it takes is a little thinking outside the box, and the answer becomes clear as day. This is what was switched with Launchpad 1. It has to be the Space Museum. Take that! Launchpad 1 was switched with the Space Museum. In the past, the Space Museum used to be Launchpad 2. It has all the same features as Launchpad 1, and can even be moved to the launch site. Meaning the Space Museum and Launchpad 1 can also be switched with each other. You catch me. The rocket the astronauts boarded was not the one in Launch Pad 1. It was the one in the Space Museum. What? Boulder Dash! And yet, it's the only explanation that counts for every riddle and inconsistency. This is how the Space Center was just before the incident. I see Launchpad 1 and the Space Museum have already switched places. 
Oh wait, who is that? I see Launchpad 1 in the Space Museum had already switched places. That's right, but with the two switched like this, the astronauts entered the Space Museum from Boarding Lounge 1. This allowed the true killer to enter Launch Pad 1 from Boarding Lounge 2 and set the bomb on the rocket. Come to think of it, the door to the Space Museum for Boarding Lounge 2. Exactly. Anyone could pass through the door to the Space Museum. There is no fingerprint recognition system on that door. In other words, with the two launch pads switched like that, Someone other than Mr. Spryver could have easily planted the bomb. After setting the bomb on the rocket, the culprit snuck into Boarding Lounge 1 and waited there, concealed, in order to kill Mr. Turan when the two astronauts emerged from the Space Museum. Recall that Miss Blackwell, Mr. Starbuck, and the director all saw a suspicious, suspicious figure, who, who we can suppose after killing Mr. Turan, made their escape into the Space Museum. After that, Director Cosmo switched the two launch pads back, without realizing the killer was inside the Space Museum. The killer then left the Space Museum and made a clean getaway. Yeah! Right, Dono, I see you know how to handle a sword and handle it well. Perhaps I should call your sword, Master Bluff? I'm a seasoned warrior who has cut down many Silence. a prosecutor. But unless you can prove your theory, it's no better than a rusty sword. That's right, you have no proof I switched the launch pads. Somebody needs a better anger management counselor. If the launch pads really were switched, there might be a record of it somewhere. At this point, launch pad one and the space museum were switched with each other. Alp C2. So the corridor beyond the door should be the one that belongs to the Space Museum. Let's see, this is an image of the Launchpad 1 corridor. Do you see anything different when we compare it to the security footage? Huh? That that number on the floor. Well, what do you know? Looks like we have proof after all, Prosecutor Blackwell. And if this is just another bluff? Oh, don't worry. It's all right here. Right in this footage. Proof that beyond this door is the corridor to the Space Museum. Very well, then. Answer this for me if you would. What in the footage proves that the corridor belongs to the Space Museum? Take that! There's a 1 on the floor of Launchpad 1 corridor. But take a look at the floor of the corridor in the security footage. Do you see the number on the floor behind the astronauts? It doesn't look like a 1, does it? That's because what you see is actually a part of a 2. What? What? Why is it a 2 and not a 1? That's because the corridor you see is the 1 to the Space Museum. Gah! So that means the corridor in this footage was not filled with smoke. That's right, because the explosion didn't occur in the Space Museum. The explosion occurred in Launch Pad 1, on the side opposite of the Space Museum. Now that we know the two astronauts escaped from the Space Museum, the mystery from the previous trial of how they got down the ladder is cleared up. Mr. Turan, carrying Mr. Starbuck, simply took the elevator from the upper level down to the middle level. Just incredible! The two launch pads were actually switched! But you think someone would notice an event of that magnitude? Everyone was down in the basement shelter when the launch pads were swapped back. There's no way anyone could have known what was happening on the surface. No more lies, Director Cosmos. It's high time. You told us the truth. 
God! My honor, my glory, everything is slipping away! Time to deploy my ultimate weapon! Galactic Engine! Ignition! What? It's going haywire! It won't stop! My stars, my glory! Not that way! Ah! Wow. That was a fun breakdown. Rebailiff, on your steed and after that witness! Hey guys, I know we're at time, but I'm pretty sure we're at the end of the case. So I'm gonna keep going and finish it. Hmm, I see we managed to retrieve you before you came to any bodily harm. Director Cosmos, do you admit you switched the launch pads? Grr, I admit it's true. I switched launch pad one for the Space Museum. Ah, it's good to hear words I can believe for a change. Before you do, Your Honor, two things. First, we don't know Mr. Tehran had prior knowledge of the switch. As for Mr. Starbuck, he was unaware of his surroundings thanks to his medication. Either way, Mr. Tehran would have realized the instant he stepped into the Space Museum that had been switched with the launch pad 1. So my first question is, if the Space Museum was perfectly fine, why did Mr. Tron feel the need to put on such a dramatic display? As for my second question... I'd like Director Cosmos to tell us why he switched the two launch pads to begin with. Oh, please, I can't. I, I exercise my right to remain silent. But I will say my hands were tied. I was only doing what I could to keep my men from getting caught in that blast. <laughs> the director is terrified. Must have one heck of a reason for not wanting to explain why. Probably not a good time to try to pry it out of him, huh? Excuse me, but would you mind if I picked up my stars? Without my badge of rank, I'm nothing. Don't see why not. Bailiff helped the director retrieve his stars. It appears a possibility of a culprit other than a defendant has presented itself. Mr. Starbuck, is there anything you wish to say? I don't get it. Don't get it? What don't you get? Director, why did you do all that? From the very beginning, you never meant for the launch to go ahead, did you? Y you you tricked us! Mr. Starbuck. Starbuck, my boy, I'm sorry. I can't tell you the reason why. But I had to do it to protect the Space Center. Director! Will I, will I ever get the chance to go into space again? Yes. Yes, of course. I won't rest until it happens. I will get you into space again, my boy. And the dream is still alive. Silence! <laughs> You're not going to space, Starbuck. But prison. I won't have it any other way. Why are you so hung up on him? Yes, I accept that the launch pads really were switched. If there were a third person at the scene, I suppose they could have escaped. But I have yet to see proof of this third person's escape via the Space Museum. Oh, that's a good point. Ah, he's right. I don't have any proof. Starbuck, you will spill everything you know. What? Me? Where did you get those bombs? Tell me now! If you don't, my blade shall feast on your blood! If I'm gonna die, I'd want to die in space! I have to do something. Solomon Starbuck, prepare yourself. Ha ha ha!
ha! Now, you, now you know violence is the answer, Prosecutor Blackbill. Oh, that's annoyingly cheerful laugh. Be none other than. Champion of Righteousness, Bobby Fulbright here. In justice, we trust. Detective Fulbright? Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Lawyer. I hope I'm not too late. I don't believe we had an appointment. I tried to think I tried to hurry, but I ended up helping a little old lady cross the street. And I had to break up a cat fight. I'll tell ya, just as sure as a full-time job. Was it a fight between cats or uh-huh. Why are you here again? Because the defendant isn't the culprit, and I came to make sure that justice is served. Uh, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. Fulbright, I always thought you were a bit touched in the head. But have you finally succumbed? Nope, but it looks like you've succumbed to this phantom of yours. Open your eyes and let the evidence of justice uncloud your judgment. What evidence? Come to think of it, he did say something about finding us some evidence. I didn't think he was serious, though. So what is it, Detective? Is it something that will prove Mr. Starbuck innocent? It is indeed. Have a look at this. What's this? A lighter? That's right. A lighter thought to have been used by the culprit, no less. The Space Museum's cleaning robot picked it up. It has the victim, Clay Charon's blood, along with his killer's fingerprints on it. But what? Yeah! Order, order. Detective Fulbright, can I assume that the fingerprints don't belong to the defendant? You bet. Mr. Starbuck is totally innocent. This is it. It's just what I needed. Your Honor, this is decisive evidence that supports the defense's earlier claim. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. With pleasure, Your Honor. Recall where this lighter was found. Based on that, we can extrapolate that after the killer murdered Mr. Tehran, they escaped with the lighter in hand into the Space Museum, where they dropped it. The switching of the two launch pads occurred. Then finally, the killer left through Boarding Lounge 2 and made their escape. Meanwhile, Mr. Starbuck was found in Boarding Lounge 1 after the murder, a fact that Director Cosmos has testified to. Therefore, Mr. Starbuck couldn't have possibly been the one to drop the lighter there. Ah, uh, but the defendant had free reign of the area until Director Cosmos appeared. Could he not have dropped the lighter in the space museum during the span of that time? You'd like that to be true, wouldn't you? But Director Cosmos testified that right after he saw the mysterious figure with a lighter, he went into the lounge and found the unconscious Mr. Starbuck. In others, Mr. Starbuck wouldn't have had the time to double back to the museum. No, Prosecutor Blackwell, this lighter could only have been dropped by the real killer. Most importantly, Mr. Starbuck's fingerprints were nowhere to be found on this lighter. You understand what this means, don't you? The piece of evidence unequivocally proves that Mr. Starbuck wasn't the culprit. This does indeed appear to be decisive evidence that proves the defense's claims. As for the remote switch that was found in Mr. Starbuck's pocket, we can assume it was planted by the killer on the unconscious Mr. Starbuck. No, there must be some mistake. Frankly, Prosecutor Blackwell, I've been worried about you. You've been chasing this phantom for seven whole years. I understand your urgency because tomorrow... Science. Fulbright, you promised never to speak of that. Huh? Tomorrow? What about tomorrow? Given the body of evidence, I think it's safe to say the defendant is innocent. In light of the fact that it is impossible for him to have committed the crime, 
You won't answer questions remain, so I took forward to seeing what you want to uncover. But for now, this court finds the defendant, Solomon Starbuck, not guilty. Why do I feel like Starbuck isn't really innocent? Yes, we did it, Mr. Wright! Looks like we pulled it off somehow, huh? Somehow? With some help from Detective Fulbright. Mr. Wright, Miss Sachs, thank you. Please thank Apollo for me, too. You are all the best! Oh, I wish I could tell Apollo about Miss Starbuck's verdict right now. Yeah, me too, but that's going to have to wait. Now that the verdict has been reached, I'd like to bring today's trial to a close. Court is adjourned. Objection! Oh, Christ. It's too late to object, isn't it? It simply isn't possible. Something's wrong. Prosecutor Blackwell, are you dissatisfied with the verdict? Fulbright, what were the results of the fingerprint analysis for the lighter? Oh, the result. Oh, the results. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 Uh, well, I was in a hurry, you see, and there was that cat fight, and well... I kind of got carried away when I heard the prints weren't Mr. Starbucks, so... You have yet to read it. Prosecutor Blackwell, can you read out who the prints belong to? Upon thorough analysis, the fingerprints... ...were found to belong to Athena Sykes. So says the report. What? What? Huh? M me Holy shit. Oh no. Why? Order. I say order. Miss Sykes, tell me you have an explanation for this. We just finished proving this light and could only belong to the killer. So finding our prints on it can only lead us to one grave conclusion. I, I don't know how they got in there, but I know I'm not the culprit. This can't be happening. We built up our argument one piece by piece. And I don't think any of our reasoning was faulty. So how could it have led to this? Oh, what have I done? Please forgive me, I'm sorry! Order, order! Detective Fulbright, stop your crying! What in the world is happening here? It's like the world's gone mad! Order, order! I will have order! Confusion spiraled into utter chaos. After all we'd fought for, the truth had turned it cruelly on us to accuse of the crimes. Somewhere, somehow, everything had gone terribly wrong. We had stumbled over the edge of our reason and into the jaws of a twisted darkness. Well, um... That's quite a twist. Uh, I was not expecting that one. Um... Why... 
Well, that's not true. We didn't have to put the fed truce and apologize as but They've gone right back to what have the partner accused of murder? <laughs> I'm sorry I'm so silent here, but, uh, that was a great case. I was, I was invested in that one from beginning to end. And of course, it had quite the payoff at the very end there. Holy crap! Well, tell me what you guys thought of it in the comments. That was a solid 9 out of 10 case for me. And I hope the next case will be even better. So, uh, I know it went a bit over, but I since we were on to something big, and, well, we were... So, uh, yeah, this will be my last video for quite a time. Um, I am moving at the end of next week, so I'll be doing all of that. I probably won't have internet set up right away, so that'll also be an issue. Um, so yeah. But hey, at least we got through this case. And until I start getting record again... Thank you all for watching. Please have a like, comment, and subscribe if you any time for more content, especially more Dual Destinies. Also, make sure to share this video far and wide so we can get as many eyes on this series as possible. And I will see you all next time.